we're going to be looking at purchases returns journal or what can be called return artworks journals we have just finished treating the purchases day books now at times goods purchased could be returned to the suppliers and when these goods are returned it cannot be posted directly to the ledgers a book has to be used to summarize these form of returns before subsequent transfer to the ledgers or the appropriate account. When goods purchased on credit are returned to suppliers, there has to be a book where the summary has to be made before it can be posted to the appropriate ledgers. And the book used in summarizing goods purchased but returned to the suppliers is called the return artworks day book or the return artworks journals. Now we're going to take some illustration to demonstrate the connectivity between goods purchased and goods returned to suppliers. Let us assume that one carton of baby soap was returned to Mustafa. Now, to treat this question, we firstly consider how much is one carton of baby soap. Then we also consider if there's any trade discount attached to these purchases. It is only after this that we can now make analysis of the actual value of the goods returned to the suppliers. Let's see how this is fixed in the purchases returns journal. Note that we have earlier purchased five cartons of baby soap at $15 per carton from Mustafa. Now that we are returning one carton of baby soap to Mustafa, the question is how much is one carton of baby soap? It is $15 per carton and we are returning one carton. The analysis is not made in the purchases journals, but in a separate account known as Return at West Daybook or Return at West Journals. Now we have the Return at West Daybook, which can also be called Return at West Journal. We have the date, the particulars, debit slash credit note. We have the details, the subtotals. Then we have total credit slash debit note. So it can be either total credit note or total debit note. If you work properly, the ruling of the returns at work journals and that of the purchases journals are almost the same. The only difference is in the debit and credit note. Under the purchases journals, you just have invoice number at this point. So we have date, particulars, details, subtotal, and total. We returned one carton of baby soap to Mustafa. And from our previous illustration on credit purchases, we know that one carton of baby soap costs $15. So we analyze it this way. Firstly, we assume a date or the date given in the equation. January 4th, 2021 is the date we are assuming. Then we must write down the name of the supplier that we are returning the goods to. Then we now make the analysis. What we return is one carton of baby soap at $15 per carton. That is one carton times $15. And that gives us $15. We take it straight to the total credit slash debit note. Let us also assume that from the equation that on January 8th, we returned two ladies' bags. To Mr. Lee. Now, if you recall, we earlier purchased some ladies' bags from Mr. Lee. So, what you do at this point is to firstly find out who Mr. Lee is. Mr. Lee is a supplier. That means we have previously purchased from Mr. Lee. Then, secondly, how much did we purchase each of the ladies' bags? Then, we also take into consideration whether there is trade discount on credit purchases. We are going to assume in this illustration 
that there was a discount of 5%. If you go back, you discover that when the goods was purchased from Mr. Lee, we received some discounts from Mr. Lee. So now that we are returning the goods to Mr. Lee, the discount is going to be taken into consideration. So firstly, find out who is Mr. Lee. Is he a supplier? Secondly, find out what we actually purchased from Mr. Lee, which is ladies' bag, and find out the unit price or the price of each bag, and also find out whether there is discount involved. With this analysis, you can confidently record these transactions in the purchases returns daybook. Now, if you observe, we purchased from Mr. Lee 10 ladies' bag at $20 per bag. And there was a trade discount of 5%. The 20 bags were purchased on credit at $200. Trade discount was 5% of $200, which gave us $10. $200 minus $10 gave us $490. Now that we are returning the goods to Mr. Lee, the books used to return goods purchased is known as return artwork daybook or return artwork journals. So we are going to the return artwork daybook. We are going to write Mr. Lee's name here. Then we now write the date of the returns. Then we make the analysis on what was returned. And if there's any discount, we take it into consideration, then transfer the amount involved either to the detail column, the subtotal, or the total credit slash debit column, as the case may be. Now we have on January 8th, the name of Mr. Lee is written here. Then what was returned to Mr. Lee is two ladies' bags at $20 per bag. That gave us $40. Dollars. From these forty dollars, we are going to deduct the trade discount of five percent. That is five over hundred times forty dollars. That gives us two dollars. Then we have forty dollars minus two dollars. That gives us thirty-eight dollars. This is the actual returns made to Mr. Lee. Remember that when we purchased the goods from Mr. Lee, there was a discount granted to us. Now that we are returning the goods, Mr. Lee will not give us $40, which is the full value of the goods purchased. Because when we purchased these goods from Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee granted us discount. So as we are returning the goods to Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee will also deduct the discount so that he will not be cheated. If we debit this amount to Mr. Lee's account, the $40, it means that we did not take the discount into consideration. So now we have removed $2 that was received as discount in respect of the goods of $40 purchased from Mr. Lee on credit earlier. So the treatment is, whenever goods are purchased on credit and discount was granted when the purchases on credit was made, when the goods is being returned to the suppliers, the discount will also be deducted so that the value that will be debited to the supplier's account will be the real value or the real cost of the goods. That is $38. We now sum up. Assuming this is the only returns for the period, if we sum 15 plus 38, that is $15 plus $38, it gives us $53. This is now the total that we're going to post to the return at West account. That is $53. Now, we have seen that the purpose of return at West day book is to summarize all the goods that were returned to various suppliers. By the time we post them to the ledger, it will make more sense to you. But bear it in mind that whenever there is returns, firstly, ask yourself, who are we returning to? Mustafa. Who is Mustafa? A supplier. Then we take into consideration the unit price of the goods purchased on credit from Mr. Mustafa. Then we check whether there is discount attached to it. As we progress, 
you will understand more about the treatment of return at West debut and the purchases journals. For our foundation stage, I believe that this is enough. So let us make a brief explanation of the headings, what they represent, and then we move over to posting these transactions to the various ledgers. Now, to analyze the headings of the returns at West Day Book, let's start from the debit slash credit notes number. Now, when we are returning goods to the supplier, the goods may be accompanied by a letter requesting a credit note from the supplier. Now, the supplier sends a credit note indicating that our account has been credited. Remember that whenever we purchase goods from suppliers, the supplier's account will be credited while our purchase account will be debited. That means when we are returning the goods, our account that has been previously debited, that is our purchase account is supposed to be credited to reduce the amount of goods purchased with the value of the goods returned. However, such returns are usually done using the return at West Day book. So a credit note can be received from the supplier as an indication that our account, which has been previously debited, is now credited. Also, the debit note relates to the account of the supplier. The supplier's account has been previously credited when we purchase the goods from the supplier on credit. So the debit note will affect the supplier in that the account of the supplier needs to be debited. And this is what the debit note actually does. Debiting the account of the supplier and crediting the account of we that are returning the goods. It should also be noted that when goods are either sold on credit, it must be the normal goods that the business deals with, that is which they buy and sell in the ordinary course of the mercantile. Goods that the organization does not buy and sell or which they do not transact in the normal trading activity cannot be recorded in return at West Day Book. For instance, purchases of his assets on credit. This is taken care of in the journal proper. We already know that the date records the date of the transaction. The particulars records the persons and the details of where the goods are being returned to. Of course, the details is a column for adjustment, as we have done here. That if there are more transactions in relation to Mr. Lee, or if goods were returned to Mr. Lee twice, then the total should be taken to this area as subtotal before being transferred to the total column. We are going to look at this when we take more comprehensive questions. For now, we already know the function of the subtotal details debit slash credit note, particulars, and date, and total, which can relate to credit or debit note. We are going to know more about the credit and debit note as we progress in our study and when we have taken some comprehensive questions. At the end of the accounting period, which may be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, the total of the returns made will be transferred to the appropriate returns at West and the purchases also transferred to the purchases account. Now let us see how these transactions can be posted to their appropriate ledgers. It should be noted that there are many reasons, that there may be many reasons why goods are usually returned to the suppliers. It may be that such goods is not a very tight order. The goods could be of inferior quality or substandard goods. However, once returns are made, the analysis has to be made in the purchases returns day book. We are going to look at the sales journals and return inwards journals, which relates to credit sales and uh, return inwards in respect of the credit sales. You should note that whenever we are selling goods on credit, such goods relates to our normal operation, that is what we deal with in the ordinary course of our merchandise. Goods that we don't buy and sell, that does not constitute part of our operations, when they are sold on credit, we don't analyze them using the returns 
at West Day Book or the return in West Day Book. Rather, these transactions are taken care of by the journal proper or the general journal. When we are finished treating the sales journals and return in West journals or the sales return journals, we are going to look at the various type of transactions that are usually taken care of by the journal proper. For now, let us pose these transactions to the appropriate or relevant ledgers or account. That is, all the purchases made on credit and all the returns made to suppliers. Let's put them into their appropriate ledgers and see how they look like. What we are going to do at this stage is to open account for all the suppliers that Victory Enterprises purchase goods from on credit. Remember that Victory Enterprises purchase goods from Mustafa, from Ben, and from Mr. Lee. So Mustafa, Ben, and Mr. Lee are the suppliers and are the givers. So we're going to open the accounts and have the accounts credited with purchases made from them. The purchases made from them on credit has already been summarized using the purchases day book. So when we open the purchases account, the total of the purchases made from the three suppliers will be debited to our purchases account. Thereafter, we are going to open the return at West account to take care of the summary made in the return at West day book. For now, let us open the various accounts for Mustafa, for Ben, and for Mr. Lee. And also, let's open the purchase account and see how these transactions that we are summarized using the purchases day book and the return at West day book can be posted to the appropriate ledgers or accounts. It should be noted at this point that credit transactions are not posted to the cash book. When goods are purchased on credit, two accounts are involved. The suppliers we are purchasing the goods from and our purchases account. These are the accounts that is involved because cash did not pass during these transactions. Therefore, at this junction, the cashier is not involved and nothing will be recorded in the cash book or cash account. However, if we decide to pay any of our suppliers what we are owing them, then it is at this point that the cash account will be credited for paying them cash while the supplier that we paid the cash that represents the receiver will be debited. But in these transactions that we are dealing with now, no cash pass. Therefore, a cash account does not even come into the picture. So let's open the individual accounts for our suppliers and also open the purchases account. So from the purchases day book, which can also be called the bought journal or the purchases journal, we have that the total goods purchased on credit is $315. That is $75 plus $50 plus $190. Remember that the $200, the $200 goods purchased from Mr. Lee, there was a discount on it, which is $10. That resulted to this $190, but we deducted the 10 from the 200 this kind of discount is called trade discount. The trade discount is on the catalog price or the price list of the goods purchased on credit. This kind of discount is not posted to the ledgers. Everything about this discount ends here as it does not form part of the cost of the goods purchased on credit. The real cost of the goods purchased on credit is $190. So when we are posting, this discount will be ignored. It ends here, that is with the preparation of purchases journal and does not go out from here and cannot be posted to the ledgers. Now from the purchases journal or the bought journal, we have that the total invoice is $315. That is $75 purchased from Mustafa. $50 purchased from Ben, and $190 purchased from Mr. Lee. If you add up 75 plus 50, 
plus 190 will give you 315. Remember that this 190, the original value was $200. But there was, but there was a trade discount of $10, which gave us 190. That is 200 minus $10, which represents trade discount of 5% on $200. This kind of discount is a discount made on the catalog price list of the goods purchased. This discount does not extend out of these journals. It is not posted to the account or the ledgers. It ends with the record it made in the purchases journal, since it does not form part of the cost of the goods. So the real cost of the goods is 190. That is the amount that was added to other value to obtain $315. And having opened the purchases account, this represents the purchases account of Victory Enterprises. And the total goods purchased by Victory Enterprises from the three suppliers, Mustafa, Ben, and Lee, is $315. As you can see, it has been debited because this is Victory Enterprises buying. Now the purchases account represents the receiver that is Victory Enterprises that purchase the goods and has to be debited with the total goods purchased on credit. Of course, under the particulars, we wrote sundries. Sundries represents all the goods that was purchased on credit. PJ here means that it is from purchases journal. This is supposed to be under the folio column. So here represents the date, here represents the particulars, somewhere here represents the folio, and here represents the amount. Of course, Total goods purchased on credit as of January 31st, 2021 is $315. It is assumed here that the account will be closed at the end of January. So we have sundries purchases. That is all the purchases on credit, $315. Then the next thing we are going to do is to open account for Mustafa and have Mustafa credited with $75. Open account for Ben and have Ben credited with $50. Open account for Lee and have Lee credited with $190. Of course, Mustafa, Ben, and Mr. Lee are the givers because we, Victory Enterprises, purchase goods from them. The account has to be credited and shown in our ledgers representing that we are owing them. So we we'll go back to open account for Mustafa, Ben, and also for Mr. Lee. When these accounts are open, they represent people that we are owing, and that is why their names are in our books. If one will purchase goods from Mustafa and Ben and Mr. Lee, we paid cash, there will be no need opening account for them because our transaction with them ended when we bought goods from them. And in our books, it will just come under purchases. The cash account or cash book will be credited for giving out money for the purchases. So now we have opened account for Mustafa, and you can see on January 3rd, 2021, we are creating Mustafa account with $75, representing the total goods purchased from Mustafa. Of course, Mustafa was credited because Mustafa is the giver. Then for Ben account, the total goods purchased from Ben is $50. So we open Ben account and have Ben credited on January 5th, 2021 with purchases of $50. Of course, the location that Ben transferred the goods to was purchases account. Of course, the total goods purchased from Mr. Lee on credit is $190. Mr. Lee's account will be opened and credited with purchases of $190. So on January 7th, 2021, Mr. Lee's account is credited with goods purchased from him valued at $190 on credit. The date 7th of January is gotten from the date that the transactions was made in the book of prime or book of original entry. That is the purchases journals. The next book we are going to be looking at is the return artworks day book. How are we going to transfer the return artworks day book summary to the appropriate ledger of the account? So that is the last thing we are going to do to end the transfer of these transactions to their appropriate or relevant ledgers. We returned goods of $15 and $38 to 
So Mustafa and Mr. Lee respectively. Now that these goods have been returned, they were summarized using the return at West Daybook. This implies that to post these transactions to their appropriate or relevant ledgers or accounts, the return at West Daybook has to be opened. And since return at West Daybook represents the account that we usually use to return goods purchased but returned, the returns at West account will be credited because it represents a given account. It is the purchases account that is supposed to be credited, but this is not the accounting practice. A separate book known as return at West or purchases returns account is opened to enable us to return such goods that are defective or are of inferior quality or there was damage during transit or the goods are substandard or the goods were overpriced that is the cost of purchase was higher than what we can buy elsewhere such goods might be returned and when these goods are returned the summary is made in the returns at west day book before being posted to return at west account the basic knowledge here is that return at west account is used to return goods back to the supplier so it's a given account so what do we do since it is a given account we credit the return at west account with the total of the return at west summarized under the return at west journals while the individual supplier that these goods were returned to will be debited and that ends the posting to ledgers or account in respect of return at west journal going through the return at west day book or the return at west journals you will agree with me that the total goods returned amounted to 53 dollars and that is the total we are going to post to return at west account so what do we do we open the return at west account and have it credited with 53 dollars being total goods returned to suppliers now we have opened the return at west account you can see the debit side and the credit side then on january 31st 2021 we are now returning goods of 53 dollars to all the suppliers represented by sundries of course i have roj here representing return at west journals that means these transactions came from return at west journals and the total is 53 this is a credit account because it represents the account that we use in giving away or returning goods that was earlier purchased but now returned. The next thing we do to complete the double entry principles is to discover the suppliers that the goods were returned to. Now, the first supplier we return goods to is Mustafa, and the total goods is $15 on January 4th, 2021. Mustafa account is going to be debited with total goods returned of $15. The next supplier was on January 8th, and that is Mr. Lee. And the total goods returned to Mr. Lee is $38. Mr. Lee's account is going to be debited with goods of $38. Mr. Lee's account is going to be debited with goods of $38 returned on January 8th, 2021. And that will end this transaction. The first thing you do the first thing you do is to credit the return at West account with the total goods returned. You now debit the individual suppliers that the goods were returned to, and that is Mustafa and Mr. Lee. So we debit Mustafa's account with return at West of $15 on January 31st, 2021. So Mustafa is the receiver at this point and has been debited. The next supplier we are debiting is Mr. Lee. Of course, we are debiting Mr. Lee with $38 being the total return at West to Mr. Lee on January 31st, 2021. Mr. Lee at this point is the receiver because goods have been returned to Mr. Lee. Part of the goods purchased from Mr. Lee, which is $190, is now being returned. That is $38. If you want to return at West, account it contains $53 this $53 is made up of this $38 goods returned to Mr. Lee 
and the fifteen dollars goods returned to Mustafa. At this point, we have concluded the transfer of all the entries in the return at West day book to the appropriate ledger. As firstly, the total return at West of $53 was credited to return at West account. While the amount that makes up the $53, which represents the account of the individual suppliers that the goods were returned to, and that is why Mustafa was debited in his account with $15, and Mr. Lee was debited with $38. Now, you can see Mustafa's account that out of the goods of $75 purchased from Mustafa, the goods of $15 has been returned. That is ARUCO representing returns at West. Of course, the total amount we are owing Mustafa now is $75 minus $15 of the goods returned to Mustafa. And the total amount we are owing Mr. Lee is goods of $190 purchased from Mr. Lee minus the $38 of returns at West. ROO, ARO means returns and O means at West. This is representing the return at West made to Mr. Lee. So if we have $190 minus $38, it gives us the balance that will be remaining as the amount that we are owing Mr. Lee at the end of the period. Assuming any of these suppliers that we purchase goods from, that cash was paid to them, of course, at this point, the cash book will be involved by crediting the cashier that paid to the supplier and debiting the account of the suppliers. For instance, if we pay Mustafa $5, the cash account that gave us the $5 will be credited with $5, while Mustafa's account will be debited with cash of $5. The same is applicable to Ben. But in this instance, no cash is involved in what we are treating. So at this point, we are going to balance all the relevant accounts and extract a trial balance. Remember, we are not balancing journals. Journal is for recording purposes. Remember that it is a book of prime or original entry, which information inside it has been gotten from the source documents. For instance, the invoices, the debit note, and the credit note. They are all source documents. It is from these books, the debit notebook, the credit notebook, and the invoice booklets that these credit transactions have been summarized before being transferred to their appropriate ledger. We have just prepared the purchases daybook and return at West daybook. Both of them are subsidiary books that their preparation involves taking records from the source documents. So let us extract the trial balance. 